What's up people? In this video, Sarah Ashkan asked me to do this without telling me what it is. It was on this this video where I was visibly agita agitated from watching the type of video that I normally watch. You can't sin and be a son or daughter of God. So do you sin? No. You don't Oh, okay. Um Hmm. Jesse Lee Peterson Savage Moments Part 16. Hmm. Okay, whatever. Fuck it. Um you guys have any other videos or recommendations you want me to take a look at? Let me know. Leave me a comment. Yes. Hello? You can actually say that with a straight face. Yes. That'll smile. Michael, you have anger? Yeah, I got a lot of anger, and I got a lot to be angry about. What do you have to be angry about? You say Donald Trump is a great white host. Do you also think Alex Jones is like the great black knight? Who? See? Amerifro. And anyone who was born in this country, and you call yourself a hyphenated, whatever, you're an idiot. You need to go. Goodbye. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. This woman's name is Alexandria. Ocasio Cortez. Sound like a matador, doesn't it? <laughs> the one thing I want you to know, haters, you are not allowed to hate President Trump. You won't fare well when you do that. Life won't turn out very well for you. Check it out. Look how nutty Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters, the wicked witch of the West with the low IQ. She's losing it. She is mentally and emotionally losing it because of her hatred of President Trump. I have with me Natasha Marion. It's a very interesting point. I'm, I'm not sure why he's saying that specifically, um, but I've said that also. Like, okay, so basically, like, 2016, like the run up to the election. Like, I, I hate politics. I don't care about politics. I've actually never voted for president in my life. I don't think I voted one time in the Schwarzenegger election. Didn't vote for Schwarzenegger. Couldn't bring myself to vote for a Republican. Um, anyway, I don't care about politics, but I, of course, like you're going to casually observe even if you have no interest like it was everywhere right and what i noticed is that like the democrats or liberals however you want to define that they acted like such they acted like little babies like little crybabies and i was like why are you guys acting like this Tr trump just acted like the man he just like held kept his cool regardless of like all these scandals and all this shit that they threw at him that like let's be honest that would have destroyed anybody else any other candidate would have like instantly crumbled and lost but they literally through everything that they had at him could not do anything to him just because he was the man just because he acted like a fucking boss straight up and and nobody on the other side seems to understand that and like honestly i i kind of saw this in the beginning where i would and i still i still see it now i fucking open my phone and like the news section always has an article about trump trump and it's always like rephrased kind of in a negative way Trump loses his cool at this meeting and calls a you know black lawmaker, tells him to clean up his shitty town or something like that. Whatever, right? They're trying. They're clearly trying to like incite some sort of uh, anger again, like against him. They're, they're stirring the pot basically, um, and I, I think he said that it's like if you if you let that hatred get the better of you, you're going to make mistakes and and the, it's going to show on your face, and as a result, you're going to lose because nobody wants to like even people who might agree with you, they're not going to like want to side with anybody who, who acts like that, right? You just generally want to go with the cooler head, I, I think, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Um, she is the woman behind the project reparations.me, a social media experiment in which black post request. So black people go on the site and they post request for reparation, uh, for in parentheses here, for physical or emotional help and whites offer favor. So you can go on the site and say, hey, I need someone, for example, I don't know if this is on there or not. Uh, I need, hey, I need someone to come and clean my house. And a white person go on and say, okay, black person, I'll come and clean your house for you. I, I need to go on this site because I definitely need help cleaning my house. I'm Skyping with Natasha. Natasha, good morning and thank you for coming on. Morning. How are you? All this well. I appreciate you being here. Very interesting website, reparations.me. How did you come up with this idea? Oh, why? The website is about bringing about healing in the present tense for uh, many of us who feel like our spirits are a bit broken right now. There's a lot of racial tension in our country. And many people don't feel like they can do anything about it. Um, they feel like the problem is too big and they don't feel empowered to 
to do anything personally themselves. And so the idea behind my website is that each one of us can take some time and think about um, how we add value to our communities. And if you identify as white, which is certainly a decision that people make, um, if you identify as white, then you can think about, is there anything that you can do to help those in your community who don't have the privileges that you have? Um, for instance, if you have a professional career, um, perhaps you can help somebody with networking. Maybe you could mentor somebody, look over a resume, maybe even um, take on somebody as a, like, as a new hire who's looking for a job. Um, there are many ways to leverage your privilege. So the site is allowing people who may or may not agree with any of the philosophies behind the project to practice leveraging their privilege, which is something that all of us can do regardless of how we identify, because uh, privilege is intersectional. And so is it black people who are feeling that, I mean, who are feeling that their spirits are broken? Um, are you are you a black person asking me a black person to speak for all black people? Because we both know how ignorant that is. Like, let's not do that. It's, it's <laughs> I can speak for myself. Like, you say my experience is um, looking at the bombardment of negativity in the media, um, all the police shootings, the mass shootings, the school shootings. And if that's not getting you down, then you're probably not an extremely human individual. Because I feel like human suffering is something that we should all respond to. So are you saying that it's black people who are feeling that their spirits are broken? Are you asking me the same question again? You didn't Just answer the question. You, you, went, you went black female on me. You didn't answer the question. You went nasty. Answer the question. Is it black? You said that there are people who are feeling that their spirits let's, let's are back broken. Up a little bit. When you say I went black female on you, yes. what exactly do you mean? You know how black pe females, like you have a nasty personality, and when someone doesn't agree with them or, or a reasonable person, the black woman go female. You know, they go nasty, just as you just did. I have so no I idea what you mean. I have a question for you, I though. You, no, um, no, I see no. you retweet Ann Coulter a lot. Does she ever retweet you? I need you to answer the question. Are you saying that. Does Ann Coulter retweet you, or does she think you're a nasty, lazy black man? Are you saying that. I'm just curious, because if I'm a going black female, then you must stay black male. Like, what does Bill O'Reilly have to say about you? What is she Oh, uh, it's funny. Um, wow. Okay. Wow. You really uh, you, you gave me a doozy, uh, Sarah Oshkon or Sh Shelly Oshkon, whatever. Um, interesting. Uh, yeah. So like the whole. Okay. So so let's. I don't really talk about race too much. Um, I, I personally like I, like I said, I'm, I'm Jewish, but I, I I think I'm white, right? Like I'm I'm a, I'm a white person, right? I, I identify as white, and I, I can say for sure it's 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 good to be white right like it's you know I don't I don't like hate black people or like hate other you know skin colors or anything like that obviously not but like um, you know it's it's good right like it, just be, the reason I say that is because like you know if if you're white like in the rest of the world not I don't want to say you're like higher status but like it's it's just like life's just a little bit easier you know what I mean. Um, doesn't mean it's impossible for other people, but like, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, what it would like, let's say I was black, right? Obviously like depends where you live and like, not everybody's going to get harassed, but like, you know, all things being equal, it's, I, I would, I would say I'm not black. I have no idea, blah, blah, blah. But like, I would assume that like all things being equal, it would be, li life would be harder if you are black. Right. I, I would say that is, is that like you know, is that, is that an excuse to not try? No, I don't think so. Um, in terms of like her website in, in, in practice, I don't, I don't think it's bad because it, it's essentially volunteering, right? Like when, if you were to say it's a website for people who are doing well in life to help people who are not doing well in life, I think that's great. That's wonderful. Right. But, but when you frame it in a way that it's for people, it's, it's for, for, um, you know, whatever, like black people who feel oppressed, I I'm putting words in her mouth, but like, let's say black people who feel oppressed um, and feel like they deserve reparations. I, this is like what my interpretation of what she's saying. Um, feel like they deserve, well, I, she didn't really say that, I guess. I don't know, whatever. It's like for black people who feel like they deserve more help, I guess, and it's and they're unfairly treated because they're black, I guess, which doesn't sound so bad now that I think about it, um, to get help from people who are white and don't have those problems. I guess that in and of itself also doesn't sound bad now that I say it. I guess the, the quote unquote bad part here is the motivation behind it um, is this, this like, I guess, attitude of entitlement that you deserve it, right? I think, like I said, in and of itself, you know, I, I'm gonna say probably harder to be black to make it in the world, probably, you know, based on no research, but that's, that's my gut feeling. Um, definitely a good idea for people who are more fortunate to help people who are less fortunate if they want to. Um, but an attitude of entitlement that you deserve it because that's the, that's the, that's the problem here. And, and I think, I'm not sure, but I think that's his point also. 
Um, anyway, interesting. Let's, let's see what Sean else. Sean, what do they have to say about you? That, or do they say anything about you? Because they probably don't care. Because remember, all lives matter, right? Except for yours, if are, you were held up by a cop. Are you saying like, that? Start that crap with me? Like, are, really? You think this is going to be a civilized discussion? You call yourself a Christian, and you want to start a discussion by calling me names? Are you, Why you go to school and grow up? This conversation is over. Uh uh-uh. uh. Are you about to run? She ran. Oh, and she just has attitude all over the world. She ran. See, I told you these angry people, they can't handle inner truth at all. She, I think she ran. She's back. Natasha, you're back. I thought you ran, but I'm glad you didn't run. You're not a coward. Thank you for coming back. Um, a coward? Like what, a troll? Like you? I Somebody said, who calls people names and they don't even know what the person is, what their life experience is? Let me go back to my original question. Are you saying that it's black people who are feeling that their spirits are dead or hurt or whatever you said? No, I'm not saying that my spirit is broken. So what I'm saying is the there are many people in this country right now, of all identities, who do not feel very good, they do not feel healthy and whole in the racial landscape. Why not? And those people are all different colors, and every kind of that, shade you could think of. Why, did, why is it that they don't feel healthy or whole? Because this country isn't healthy and whole right now. And, and if you can't pick up on that, then like I can't help people like you. Give me, give me an example of the country not being healthy and whole. Have you been paying attention to anything that's been happening in the news? Well, I see black people, not all, not all, but most, I see black people out of control, but that's due to the feeling of their parents and the lack of moral character. Well, if you're about to start talking to me about quote unquote black and on black crime, I'm going to roll my eyes and hope that one day, you know, God blesses your heart, yours specifically. Um, and so let me ask, reparation me. So black people can go on your site and ask for help from white people. How would that stop them from acting out in the manner that they're acting out. You know, we see a lot of thugs being killed by police officers. I don't know what you mean by this term acting out. Are you talking like Timothy McVeigh acting out? Are you talking Jeffrey Dahmer acting out? Are you talking Donald Trump acting out? So, you know, I, I think what what's the issue here is like she, she's not like she's not addressing what he's saying. It's like a debate basically. Um, and he's saying like there's a lot of like, you know, whatever black on black crime a lot of crime that comes from like black communities uh it's a result of like the families not being you know dad's not there whatever raised by single mother i think that's what he's getting at right it's like i, I, I this, this guy like strikes me as like the black jordan peterson sort of right um interesting that his name is jesse lee peterson uh but jordan peterson says a lot of the same stuff where like you know the family unit like uh family is important basically and like religion is also important because that's how normal people like that that's how to create somebody who's like well balanced and doesn't go out and commit crimes it's kind of the point um or one of many points and uh i think that's a valid point which she does not seem to be acknowledging at all because she wants to say what she wants to say to win the argument what about ann coulter what about sean hannity what about blah 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 oh they don't care about you because you're black has nothing to do with, with what he said right you know he asked her a question right like and again like i said the the idea behind the site which is essentially asking people if they want to volunteer for a specific reason is not bad but um the like i don't know the the sense of um entitlement a little i don't know it's a good idea for sure like if there's people willing to help like you know have them help any way they can um uh, losing her temper a little bit Let's see yeah what's. what kind of acting out and Coulter acting out what kind of acting out where is all your hostility coming from why are you so angry am i angry are you angry you don't see that you have an attitude right now do I have an attitude? No, I, I have do you see? Names. I said, do you but, see? See, I went to high school in the South, and I know probably a lot of your listeners are Southern. There's this little thing that we like to do in the South, and it's, it's called politeness. It's called etiquette. So if I meet you for the first time, it's really quite rude. It makes me look bad if I insult you the very first time I meet you. And you did that with me. And that's and why you I have all, no idea who that's brought why you, you up. That's why you name calling. You probably didn't do a very good job if they didn't cover that part. That's why you right? name calling. So like, if you have a guest, you should be... Okay, so I, I just want to move my overlay to the center because, yeah... Hopefully that will be better, so you can see her face when she talks. Yeah. Be kind to your guest. And that's you why know, you're like the Native Americans were when the white people invaded America. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? I, I read that you are an artist. What type of artist are you? I'm a conceptual artist, but I'm sure you have no idea what that means. I absolutely don't. What does it mean? <laughs> it means the idea is more important than the uh, actualization. <laughs> when I come back, we have some calls for you, and maybe you can be more reasonable. I'm glad you didn't put your tail between your legs and, and, and ran. I'm not a troll. We, we I have, use my hands to do good work. I'm going to give you the chicken I'm not a troll. All right, hold on. We'll be, hold on. Right after this break. We take some calls for her phone. She got issues. Natasha, you say you're an artist, a conceptual artist, right? Yeah. Is it true that conceptual art is fake art? Is radio fake media? <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself acting this way, girl. Really? Are you my daddy? Did you come up? Are you telling me what to do now? You are. You, you daddy. Is that what this is about, Jesse Lee? Uh, you have a file. Oh, come on now. Let's take some calls. Hold on. You know, with a woman, you have no business telling me what to do. You worry clean. about yourself. How are your kids? Are you raising them? Keep it clean. Don't go. Don't talk nasty on the radio. 
You can't speak that way on the radio. On the radio. Yeah. Who are you talking to ask you to? You can't tell a woman what to do who you don't know and expect that that's going to go well. Come on, ask a friend. Watch ask your mouth. Friend. Watch your mouth. I'm sure your father would be embarrassed by you. Let's go out to Cleveland, Ohio and talk to Bessie. Bessie, good morning. You're on with Natasha. <laughs> Oh, good morning. Natasha, I also want to thank you for coming back um, um, because I had a couple of questions. I, and I mean this sincerely. I'm trying to understand exactly what you mean. Would you please define, um, in your eyes, the word privilege? Privilege means different things to different people. And I think your question is a good one. Um, a lot of thank white you. identified Americans, when they hear the word privilege, they think about luxury. So they think um, that privilege is referring to money specifically. And sure, economic class is one way of looking at privilege. Obviously, you, you have more money than somebody with less money. That is a privilege. But privilege is intersectional, so it works on different levels. For instance, I have a master's degree. I don't think Jesse Lee Peterson has one. So in that Thank case, God. I would have Thank more God, I don't privilege have one. than him. Um, because I could take that education and those critical thinking skills out into the world and help other people. So privilege okay, so is really complicated. Not, it's not the no, sort of no, thing that's super cut and dry, like rich people have privilege and poor people don't. Um, if you're able to stand up and walk around, you have privilege over somebody who's less able-bodied than you. If uh, you can vote. Okay, so so this is honestly like where where the argument kind of breaks down a little bit. I, I think I think privilege might be the wrong word here, because um, if you if you define everything like that as as privilege, then where do you draw the line, right? Like if you can stand up and walk around, you have privilege over people that don't. Like that's I don't want to say that's that's wrong because I guess like factually that's technically correct I guess like you have the privilege of walking around whereas somebody who's in a wheelchair doesn't have that privilege I guess that's right but but when you say it like that it implies that like it's it, you don't deserve it right because it's a privilege um, or, or you yeah basically that's the implication is that you don't deserve it right which is different from saying somebody who can't walk uh, has a disadvantage, right? It's like the other side of the coin, which um, is, is generally how we see things. But you see this a lot. Like I see this a lot on uh, on when I go on 4chan on the Fitboard. There's a there's a popular thread pops up like every day. It's called Fat People Hate, right? And you see a lot of like screenshots of Tumblr posts that talk about thin privilege, right? And it's like all these like it's honestly like it's it's like these people are trying to outdo one another with this whole like thin privilege thing. And it's like I don't know, thin privilege is uh, being able to go grocery shopping without being body shamed, right? Some woman tells a story about like how she went to the grocery store and some kid called her fat, some like little kid, like three-year-old kid, like pointed her and called her fat. Like that's thin privilege, right? Thin privilege is like being able to drive a car. Some woman's like so fat she can't drive a car. You know, all this stuff, right? Is, is that thin privilege, right? Like the, okay, so like, you know, with the black thing, and again, I'm not black, like what do I actually know? But like, you can't you don't you don't have a choice the color of your skin really you can like tan fine if you're like whatever but if, if you're born black like you're you're you know can you like not can you become not black like physically i don't think so i don't think it works like that it doesn't work like that so you're, you're kind of i don't want to say you're, you're stuck with that but that's something that you can't change so to um and this is kind of like i think one of the good things about america is that you know okay fine every country is like racist of course but we don't like automatically like rule out it's not like it's like apartheid or something you know what i mean um but anyway the point is that you can't change that so like it's not fair to judge somebody based on something they can't change um and like maybe you had an accident and you can't walk like whatever that's different but like the fat thing like come on that's within your control so you know, anyway, let's just, yeah. So. About privilege over somebody who can't, who maybe is incarcerated and lost the right to vote. Um, okay. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I think I, I just want to make this So just like to touch on the like incarcerated thing, you know, of course people can be wrongfully convicted of crimes they didn't do. Um, but how often does that really happen, right? I, I don't actually know, but probably not most of the time right I, I don't know i don't have the stats on that um and i guess technically it's true if you're incarcerated you do not have the same privilege that somebody who's not incarcerated has but there's no like implication of whether or not you, you deserved that punishment as defined by like the rules of the society you live in well, Natasha, it, it, it encompasses things like economic class education um one physical state in other words you know if you're in a, a wheelchair heaven forbid or have a physical anomaly uh, that would not be a privilege, right? And then one's ability to vote, uh, i.e. if one is a convicted felon, for example, that would be a lack of privilege. Do I have that? 
Um, you're, you're, you're in the area, you're in the vicinity. <laughs> Basically what I'm saying is privilege isn't like a one size fits all. Different people have different kinds of privilege. But white privilege is a privilege that's linked specifically to the color of your skin. So you okay. could be a really, really poor white person, you could be a disabled white person, you could be a gay white person, you could be a white person with no education, and you would still have white privilege, which is the privilege of saying to be pulled over for expired tags and not get shot and killed. <laughs> okay, all right, so two things. I know this is going to I have to still have to go fast, I'm coming to the break, go right to it. Oh. oh God! There's so much to say, though, Jesse. There's so much to say. I, you know, I can't. I can't say it real fast. Is there any way? Is your desk staying over or no? No, we have so many people who want to talk to you, Jesse. You do have time. Just get to your okay. point. Okay. It, my point is, is that one might look at someone like me, Natasha, who uh, who grew up not only in a poverty situation, with a father who went to jail. I am white. He went to jail. We had nothing. We didn't have enough food in the house. I we scrimped and saved. Yes, I worked myself up to a, to earn a doctorate degree actually, and have businesses. But I guess you would consider to me, me to be one of privilege. But you're also making the assumption. Uh, in a way that I'm not already helping those in need. So, in other words, uh, uh, Natasha, Bessie is saying that you don't know what you're talking about. So I'm, I'm, I, I want to be kind to your guests. Very differently than that. Women tend to communicate um, much more compassionately. Um, and <laughs> she was she was communicating her story um, very heartfelt, um, in a very heartfelt man manner. And I, and I heard that. Um, but as I said to begin with, Bethany, it's, I'm not talking about um, the privilege that you get from your doctorate or the struggles you uh, went through growing up because you're in poverty. I'm speaking specifically to the privilege of your white identity. So if you and I go into a bank together with the exact same resume, the exact same financial background, and we go in for a small business loan, you're going to come uh -huh. out with a small business loan, and I'm not, because you're white. No, That's because your credit okay, is not good. So I'm not making any assumptions because I don't. Um, so you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me. Of, so I did a video. Somebody asked me to do a video on like, on the like pickup thing. Like, do looks matter to women, right? And and basically my answer, which I said many times in the video, is like, yes, they matter, but they're not the only thing that matters, right? Looks matter, money matters, and like, you know, your race matters, of course, to like women. Like some women like black guys, some women don't like black guys, some women, you know, like white guys, don't like white guys, whatever. Um, so yeah, it, it matters, of course, but, but it's not the only thing that matters, right? So like, and again, like I said in that video too, some people are going to start with advantages versus disadvantages. And also, like I said in that video, that does not mean that the other side owes you anything, right? Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like to call it white privilege because that has now such a like negative connotation in society that it's like the term has been like abused by people like this who again like i said in, in and of itself sh she's not wrong right like that's saying like good looking person privilege you know yeah you have a fucking privilege of course but does that mean that everybody in the world should conform and, and not offer you that privilege um because right like you, you can't you can't stop people from doing that that's the current momentum that the world has basically the point is that like you can try and make the system as fair as possible but people are people and they're still gonna have their biases, good or not. And okay, fair, it, it's not fair to judge somebody immediately because they're black, for example, or because they're good looking or they're too short or they're Asian or whatever, you know. But the whole like, the whole like reparations thing, I just think it's like, you know, if it's just volunteering to help people, I think that's fine. But in terms of like repaying people for previous like misdeeds um, from previous generations, I, I think is like, I mean, it makes sense because like from a societal standpoint, like let's say your your ancestors, let's take the let's take the the black people in America, right? Let's say your ancestors were slaves, right? If your ancestors were slaves in uh, I think the 1800s, so what is that? Two like 150 years ago, your ancestors were slaves. Obviously, right? Like anybody in America really can like come up. You can work hard. You can open a business. You can fucking control your own destiny. You always have a choice. Um, but if you have a lot of influences around you that make that not a clear choice, right? It's much easier to do uh, a more immediately gratifying choice of like, let's say getting into crime or like, I don't know, whatever, like not, not doing the, um, like when, when you don't have the stress of like, you know, being poor and living in a bad neighborhood, it's much easier to make the right choice, right? Um, so, you know, like on paper, it makes sense, right? Like these people, their ancestors were slaves. If they black people in America, right? Most of them, you know, ancestors were slaves. The uh, like generational, well, I guess 150 years, that's a couple generations, I don't know. Anyway, you could make that argument. But the problem is that when you give people something for nothing, they get lazy. That's bottom line, that's the problem, right? You give people something for nothing, they're gonna get lazy. It's like in theory, it makes sense. Like I understand the point behind it. In practice, is it gonna work? 
No. The only thing that really works is like just essentially capitalism with like some regulation, um, which is basically like what America has. Like there's some rules, but you're pretty much free to do whatever you want to try and make it in the world. And we're going to try and make it as easy for you as possible to make it with all of these like, you know, um, institutional fucking things like loans and whatever. So that's, you know, what I think to be the best solution still, you know, like things like welfare and stuff, like in theory, it sounds good, right? Like a woman, she's got a bunch of kids, can't pay for the kids, can't care for shit. Th it makes sense to like, give her money every month so she, she won't die, right? But the problem is that just makes people lazy. I, I'm, I'm, don't get offended, but like you get something for nothing, you're not going to fucking try because you're getting something for nothing, you know? You won't get the loan because your credit is bad, not because of your color. No, even I said if we had the exact same background financial. But then you'll get the loan then. You will get the loan. Explainer. Why don't you do less talking over me and more listening? Natasha, okay? Natasha, you will get the loan. Jesse, there, there are laws against her not getting the loan. There are laws. Right. Against, she's going down those, to 1960s. How do you think those laws are doing? Do you realize that you are on a serious ego trip that's going to hurt you in the long run? You're in denial. You're, it's like you are. Like Donald Trump? You are an like emotional. Like I would be like suddenly like up for president of the United States. Do you like, realize, come on now. Do you realize, Since when does narcissism hurt people? Do you realize? Like you, on, Natasha, right? How's it hurting you? Hold on. Do you realize that you are. I hardly have an entire radio show dedicated Natasha, to Natasha, do you realize, do you realize that you're an emotional bastard case? Natasha, do you realize you're an emotional bastard case already? Natasha, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Because I believe in treating people as well as you want to be treated. And I don't spend a whole a lot of time let talking over people, let's, calling them names, Natasha, especially when I don't know what they know. Let me take a break. We'll come back straight to the phones. Everybody and their mama want to talk to you. Back in a moment. Look like she has a child. Poor child. Natasha, I saw a little child there looking into the screen. Is that your son or daughter? Is that your son or daughter? <laughs> Is that a yes or no? Are we, are we here to talk about my family? Is that what you want to talk about? Because I'm painting my nails. Are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? you acting like a five-year-old. Oh, are you acting like my daddy? Is that your deep dark fantasy? It, it sounds like you need it. You need your daddy. I'm sorry he failed you. Oh, what do you know about my dad? Let's go to Greg. Tell me one thing you know about my dad, because I know your dad didn't raise you. Well, I can tell he failed you. Let's go to Natasha. I mean Natasha. Greg out of Wilmington, Delaware. Greg, you're on with Natasha. Hey, good morning, uh, Jesse. Good morning, Natasha. How are you doing? Good morning, Greg. How are you? Good, good thing. I work in the uh, demographic business. And I learn a lot about on the inside what happens in terms of loans and getting into colleges and so on. And companies actually buy data because they're forced to make a certain amount of loans to blacks where they say, okay, we're stuck having to make more loans than we normally would have to, given their credit history and so on. So now let's find the best, least bad people to loan to. So we actually get more mortgages than other races. But as it relates to education, and Thomas Sowell did a great study on this, Dr. Thomas Sowell, they actually get into a better level college than they should. It actually works against them because they end up at a school that's harder than what they should be at. Are you aware of those things? Are you a racist, Greg? And, and Latasha, I've had this game played on me before. He's really breaking up. Great, I appreciate Hang it. Hang on. This woman got Every time you just sounds racist. She's, she has an issue, man. You're not going to help her. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Uh, so, so like here, here's here's the problem with like all this stuff, right? Like again, like it's it's the same thing as it looks in money, right? Like if you're if you're born a fucking rich, like six foot, you know, six foot five, like jacked supermodel, whatever, right? If you're if you're born like that, you're gonna have an advantage over everybody for sure. Okay, but if you're born five foot two, you know, of a race that's socially like not at the top and you're broke, that doesn't mean you can't make it right. And, and it also doesn't mean that the entire world should change to make it easier for you to make it right. Like at, at the end of the day, and this is like a theme with all my videos, but at the end of the day, it comes down to the individual choices that you make on a daily basis that will determine the quality of your life regardless of how hard it is, right? It doesn't matter, you're black, you're white, Chinese, whatever. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you can choose to go to work, you can choose to go and save your money, you can choose to open a business with that money that you saved, you can choose to buy something for a dollar and sell it for ten dollars, you can choose to study hard in school and write the right answers on the test, you can choose to apply for college, you can choose to do all of these things. Yes, it might be harder if you live in the hood and like, you know, like people are getting shot, like, yeah, it's harder, but you can still do it. And, and that unfortunately is just the cards that you're dealt. You know, and, and there are programs in place to make it easier for people to, you know, to succeed who are in situations like that. It's uh, it's up to them to take advantage of those. With the looks and money thing, it's it's a little bit harder because there's there's not a lot of like there's no like public institution for like helping guys improve their social life. It doesn't exist, you know, or like helping guys improve their game. So it's it's really like a couple private companies and some free content on YouTube that like promotes it. So it's much easier to fall back on the like, oh, it's looks and money, looks and money. You know what I mean? Um, but at, at the end of the day, like you, you really have to believe that you have a chance. 
essentially, r regardless of what it is. Like I say this a lot in the eating disorder videos, but it's really the same thing. And, and this is really what it comes down to when I talk about is somebody going to make it or not, is that you have to believe that you have a chance because that belief is the seed. That is the only thing that will encourage you to try, right? If you don't believe you have that chance, you won't even try because why would you try? You have no chance anyway. What's the point, right? But if you believe that you have the chance and honestly, like even more powerful than that is the belief that not only do you have a chance, but a belief that you will actually succeed. Now, like I said, just because like you need the belief that you have a chance to have the belief that you will succeed and you need the belief that you will succeed to actually succeed, if that makes sense. Like um, I've mentioned this many times, you know, I I'm currently like 16, 1,678 subscribers, not a popular channel, really, like some followers, some subscribers, things are going better lately but I didn't start out like this. Like I have almost 400 videos on my channel. Most of them have like under hundred views, right? Um, but I always honestly believed that I would make it, you know? And, and that belief that I will make it is what encourages me on days where maybe I get some mean comments or where I post some videos that don't do that well or where it, I'm just like sick of doing the work in general, right? So, you know, you, you got to have the belief, which is what it comes down to. And, and when and the, the point I'm trying to make is that when, if you buy into this narrative, which again, like I said, on the surface technically is true, just like looks and money matter is true. But if you let this narrative of like, things are harder for me because I'm black, which like I said is true, but if the conclusion that you draw from that is, so why should I try? Or so that means I need to go to reparations.me to get somebody to clean my house that's not the optimal choice as opposed to if you say for example if that leads to the conclusion okay so it's harder for me because i'm black and that's even more motivation for me to make it because i can't wait to throw it in the faces of all the people who never be who believe that couldn't do it or because i really want to help these certain people in my family and i know i'm the only one who can do it so i'm going to try extra hard right it's going to be harder probably right you know whatever there's a lot of variables in place like you know you never know um but you, you have to have that belief and you have to draw the right conclusion from that belief, basically. Tasha, do you love white people? Do you love white people? Let's go to uh, Jarvis out of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Jarvis, you're on with Natasha. Hey, how you doing, man? Good, hey, buddy. Jarvis. Hey, what's up, lady? Uh, I'm gonna ask you a quick question. I hear you on, I hear you on here uh, insinuating people without a degree are dumb people. You, he said you insinuated that people without degrees are dumb. What is that about? Uh, go back and read the transcript, honey. I did no such thing. I was trying to convince a woman with a PhD who didn't think she had privilege that, in fact, having a PhD is privilege. That is a form of privilege. But I mean, I mean, you should be. I mean, you talking about yourself in your whole commentary. So you privilege. Do you have a PhD? You know that about me. I have a master's degree. I don't think Jesse Lee Peterson has one. So in that case, I would have more privilege. I don't have one. Right? Correct. You're privileged right now to be talking on Jesse Lee Peterson's radio show. And what are you talking about? According to what you just said, you privilege, right? I don't want to none of that extra nonsense you're talking about. According to what you said, you privilege, right? Jarvis, we got to run. This woman needs help. She's not normally in the mind. Hold on. I mean, thank you for calling. We're going to take, we'll take one more call and then we let her go because she's, she, she's going off the deep end. Tasha, I got to let you go. You're a waste of time. My heart goes out to you. You have a lot of anger and I feel sorry for you. Is that your child there with you? I know you want to help me with you're my gone, anger, Jesse, because you've been talking about all draw, the things that I need to do. You want to tell me to do some things, don't you? Thank you like for coming on. Thank you for coming on. you keep all those concerns you, you have about me Goodbye, to yourself. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get lost. Wow. What an evil black female. <laughs> wow. Look at her. She's still running off tomorrow. This is what young black children have to deal with, folks. This is what you're dealing with in the rioting that's going on around the country. This is what you're dealing with in the, in the uh, marketplace, the jobs. These people got this evil attitude and they hate white people. They don't, hate, they don't love anything that's good. Can you imagine? This woman is totally, she's gone. Michael, calm down. Who is this person? Um. What's so like this is a this is a very popular message right this guy like basically like it's the whole like i i don't know if he if he like outright supports donald trump i, I wouldn't be surprised um but uh the whole like black trump supporter thing is like it's very popular right it's like it's a it's kind of like um what's the equivalent i don't know i can't think of an equivalent but basically like you would think that that most black people don't like Trump, right? You would just, you would just think that. I, don't, I, I would think that, right? Because um, he, he seems like a little bit racist and he says some shit that's kind of out there and like he says some things about like some cities that have a, like a large black population. He says they're like not the best cities, to paraphrase. Um, but 
you know, to, to have a, a very outspoken black celebrity basically say that like he likes Trump. He didn't say that explicitly. I'm putting words in his mouth, but it's a very popular message with like Trump supporters. And I'm not saying he's not genuine about it, but um, it's a it's it's like one of these things. It's like an easy ride to popularity, kind of. I, I don't know who this guy is. I don't, I don't know if he was famous before or something. Um, but very interesting video. You uh, you set me up for a doozy there on that one. Generally, don't talk about like race too much. Um, but yeah, like okay. So so again, like I said at the end of the day yeah like your race matters it, it's again it's it's exactly like the looks and money thing you know yes it matters but it's not the only thing that matters and if you believe that it's the only thing that matters or if it has such if you overestimate the significance of it to the point where it influences you um it influences your belief that you don't have enough control over your own life then that's that's not good Th then you um you're making the wrong choice essentially in my opinion like again, to draw a parallel with the looks and money thing, like if you believe looks and money matter so much that because you're not super rich and are not super good looking, that you're not even gonna try with girls, that's the wrong That's the wrong choice, right? You should still try, right? You can still get, maybe you can't reach, like you, you take two identical, or you take two people who are have the same level of game, the guy who has the looks and money is, is gonna be better, right? But most people, you have to understand also that most, most people in the world don't fucking try to reach that level at all. Most people don't fucking try at all for anything. Um, so like don't un underestimate the effort like the power of effort and hard work like it's it's worth more than you think like a lot more so anyway yeah interesting video thank you for telling me to watch that um, if you guys have any other recommendations for videos or youtubers you want me to take a look at let me know leave me a comment peace